If you were asked to name a compound, the very first question you'd ask yourself was, which group of organic compound does this compound belong to? And then, what is the parent name? That is predicted from the functional group. So let's try that. If you were asked for this compound, you'd have said an alcohol. Why? Due to the presence of the OH functional group. Now, before we continue with this video tutorials, if you are not familiar with the various functional groups we have, that is, their structures and their names, we've got you covered. There's a video tutorials I created on how I learned all functional groups with tricks. Kindly visit that video to acquaint yourself with the various functional groups. And I'll get back here so we continue. Now back to our compound. Going by the IOPAC nomenclature, it becomes 2-butanol. Butanol because it has 4 carbons, and then 2-butanol because the OH functional group is bonded to carbon number 2. Example 2. So for this compound, you'd say it's a carboxylic acid because of the presence of the COOH functional group. So going by IUPAC, this becomes a butanoic acid. How about this? It's also a ketone due to the presence of a carbonyl group. That is a carbon double bonded to oxygen and two alkyl groups attached to the carbon atom. So pause this video and tell me the IOPAC name of this compound. Yes, so you were right. I heard you saying butanol, and that was right. Now let's consider a scenario where we have all the functional groups we listed earlier in one compound. That is, we have a carboxylic acid group, an OH group, and a carbonyl group, specifically a ketone. How would you classify this type of organic compound? What then would be the parent name? To do this, you need what we call a functional group priority list. So what you see on the screen now is a functional group list, which has been arranged from the most ranked to the least ranked. So the lower the number, the higher the rank, and the higher the number, the lower the rank. But why this video? Because it's a list for functional group priorities all around. Alright, so as usual, what we do is to save you from the headache of memorization. So this video is simply to help you memorize the functional groups you see here in the order in which they occur. That is the ones which are most ranked and the ones which are least ranked. So that when you have a clash of different functional groups, you can tell which one is going to bear the parent name, irrespective of the number of functional groups that are mixed in that particular compound. All right, so now we can dive to the main part you've been waiting for, the mnemonics. But before we move to the mnemonics and memorizing these functional groups that we have here in the order in which they work here, you need to acquaint yourself with the functional groups that we have. So that when you see T, you know, T corresponds to maybe tile, when you see maybe C, you know, C corresponds to carboxylic acid and all that. So kindly familiarize yourself with um, this functional group we have here in this table. Now that you are done, let's dive into the main objective of this video. So let's begin with the mnemonics. It goes like this. Can all esters accompany amides to name aldehydes of catamines? No, don't try saying it. Either the alcohol halides cannot. Amazing. Let's take notice of the two letter words over here. They're not actually part of the mnemonic. They're just here to make the sentences we have here complete. But then they do not correspond to any functional group. So now let's link the various functional groups to each word in the mnemonic and see how it goes. So we have carboxylic acid, which corresponds to the can. We have the all corresponding to the acid and hydride, esters to ester. The accompany to the acid halide and the amides to the amide. On the second phase, we have nitriles and aldehydes. Well, the name corresponds to nitrile and the aldehyde, aldehyde, obviously. For the catamines, it's actually an abbreviation. Well, the K corresponds to a ketone, the A to an alcohol, the T to a thiol, and the amine, obviously, to an amine. Amazing. 
Now for the next phase, the don't corresponds to a compound with a double bond, the tri to a compound with a triple bond, and the saying to a single bond compound. So a double bond compound obviously will be an alkene, a triple bond compound an alkyne, and a single bond compound obviously an alkene. Very easy to memorize. For the final phase, it's also very amazing. We have ether corresponding to ether. They are corresponding to thio ether. Alkyl halides corresponding to alkyl halide. And the cannot, where we have the not part, the highlighted N corresponding to nitro. Amazing. So with this in mind, let's quickly name the compound we left unnamed at the beginning of the video. The compound had varieties of functional group. Now it's going to be very easy because you have the mnemonic in mind. Fast forward, we can see carboxylic acid dominates this very compound. Because from our mnemonic, it was carboxylic acid that was first mentioned. Hence, the parent name becomes butanoic acid. Now go ahead using the IUPAC rules to give the full name of this compound. Provide your answer in the comment section. If you really enjoyed this video, kindly subscribe, like, and share to others to benefit as well.